Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 38 with me Craig Barton. Now I'm recording this video on a Saturday in May and unbelievably it is a beautifully sunny day. The sun is beaming down. It's also the day of the FA Cup final. Uh, there's a smell of barbecues flooding through my window and for the first time all year I've actually got a bit of World Cup fever for the up and coming tournament in Brazil. So, I thought I'd have a little look around Tez and see if there's any good World Cup projects that have been produced. Now, whenever there's a big tournament, whether it be football or whether it be the Olympics, often teachers are very kind to produce um, activities, mathematical activities based around them. And they vary in quality because often it's difficult to kind of force the Olympics or something like that or football into the maths classroom in a meaningful way. But I'll tell you what, that is not the case with this activity. FIFA World Cup 2014 simulation activity, which has been uploaded by one of my all-time favourite uh, TES Maths uploaders, Daniel Burke. And honestly, it is absolutely wonderful stuff. Uh, there's loads of files there, three PowerPoint files, I think four Excel files and a Word file for you to digest. And I've been looking at this for about half an hour this morning and there's far too much for me to cram into this little five minute video. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is give you a little flavour of it and then I'd strongly advise you to take this away, perhaps share it with your department and think how you could best use this because this isn't just one of those things that fudges the World Cup in, in a maths lesson. It actually has got some really important mathematical messages behind it. So here's the PowerPoint and what's lovely about what Daniel's done here, and God, this must have taken him ages, is he's got little notes below every slide that explains his kind of lesson commentary and, and the rationale and the questions he asked. Uh, so straight away, this has got a hyperlink to the best goals from Euro 2012, just to set the scene. And then we've got the objectives. Now, throughout this, this the students will certainly be doing averages and percentages of, uh, of amounts. But for me, this is the big one. The way that this activity introduces to students the importance of probability to predict things and also experimental probability in comparing theory to what actually happens is, is remarkable. And it really hits home what can be a very abstract subject. Uh, so... This goes, uh, the, the kind of warm up activity is all about students analyzing what happened in Euro 2012 to get a bit of a flavor of the number of goals scored. And this, uh, as Daniel explains down here, this links to an Excel uh, spreadsheet, which is a worksheet here with all the results from uh, Euro 2012. And students have to work out uh, the percentage of shots uh, scored from each of the teams and, and crucially the number of goals per game. And when they've worked that out, uh, the answers come out something like this. So in 27% of the games, there were no goal, goals scored, 40% of the games, one goal scored, and so on. And that's absolutely crucial because as the activity progresses, and I'm going to skip over a lot of stuff here, but um, Daniel gets the students to calculate that actually a good way of simulating uh, that, if I just uh, skip to this, a good way of simulating the actual number of goals scored per game is to roll a dice. And if you roll a dice six times, the probability of getting no sixes coming up is 33%, which is pretty close to the percentages uh, percentage of games where no goals were scored. And the uh, probability of one six coming up if you roll a dice six times is 40%, which is actually bang on the uh, from Euro 2012 data, the percentage of games where one goal was scored. And obviously it's up to you the kind of pace and how you get the kids to, depending on the ability of the students, how you get them to calculate um, these probabilities. Maybe it's a tree diagram, maybe it's doing it all kind of abstract, maybe it's actually getting some experiments going with the dice themselves. But once they've got that theoretical underpinning, that they've now got a model that they can use to predict the number of goals per game. And then the fun really kicks off. Because Daniel's produced, um, I think, three different types of simulations, all at different levels that, that you can uh, do with your students for this. So this is the kind of traditional one, simulation one. And he shows how he set this up for uh, Euro 2012. And this involves students playing against each other. Uh, but it's got some lovely little twists here and um, that if they roll a five they get to roll again because they've got very close to the goal and all that kind of stuff as i say there's there's full rules in here and daniel has some great suggestions for commentary that you can get going with the students but um, i just wanted to jump through to some of this stuff because there's wonderful stuff simulation three is my favorite because the teams can get a bit dirty here. you can add a bit of physicality to your game so there's full instructions and i'll, I'll leave you to read it but basically you can attempt to uh, intimidate your opponents and if you roll a four they get four less chances to score but then the referee comes into play and he's going to pick up on this and this reminds me very much of and those of you who've been following um, these videos for the last couple of years will know what a huge fan i was of the lobster game and the pirate game and they're the kind of games that when you read them first you think flipping out these are a bit complicated and it takes you a while to get your head around 
and maybe I was a bit reluctant to try it with the kids, but with those games, the kids absolutely love them, and they still talk about them now, sir, when can we do lobster game again? And I think this is going to be a similar thing. It sounds complicated, but once you and your department have got your head around it and decided how to pitch it and which classes are going to do which simulation, this could be a wonderful activity. Because as I said at the start, it really does make that link between theoretical probability and experimental probability, all in the context of something that's interesting and engaging. And I know there's the classic argument here that not everyone likes football and not everyone likes the World Cup. And I would never kind of force kids to do something that wasn't kind of applicable to them all. But I think there's enough mathematical justification to uh, justify rolling this out um, across Key Stage 3 and even Key Stage 4. So there you go. There's so much to digest. I've not even cracked open some of the other worksheets in this in this uh, video, but there's loads going on there. So give that a go. Um, it's already been proven very, very popular. And if you do use it and it's successful, or you've got some ideas, comments, or even thanks, just pop onto this uh, page and just, just share a few comments. And, um, and I'm sure Daniel would genuinely appreciate that. So there you go. Um, I hope that gets you in the uh, mood for the FIFA upcoming FIFA World Cup. And I'll be back with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care and bye for now.